One of the most often used words when it comes to internet service is speed. Our modulation is a basic source of speed on our cable, DSL, satellite, and cell phone lines. We have been using modulation to get radio station signals from transmitters to receivers in our homes for over 100 years. Today, we also use modulation for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and cell phone service, to name a few applications. In this video, I'll talk about the different forms of modulation, how they work, and how modulation is applied to devices which change our daily lives. Now, there are three types of modulation. First, I'm going to talk about the analog form of modulation. First, we have amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. Now, underneath, we have the digital type of modulation. You'll notice that they're all referred to as amplitude at the beginning, then frequency and phase. However, at the end, the word modulation was changed to shift keying. So whenever you're talking about digitally modulating a signal, you refer to it as shift keying. Now, I'm going to explain how each one of these work, starting with amplitude modulation. Here we're going to be talking about amplitude modulation. Amplitude modulation is widely used for AM radios and VHS aircraft radios. Amplitude modulation is the earliest form of modulation. Here we have the voice signal and, and here we have the carrier signal. And the carrier signal does exactly what it says. It carries the voice signal. It carries the voice signal from the transmitting antenna to the receiver. The way it does this is that your voice signal here is multiplexed with the carrier signal. And the way this is done, the voice signal controls the amplitude of the carrier signal. And this is the results here with the amplitude modulated signal. As the amplitude of the voice signal goes high, the amplitude of the modulated signal goes high as well, following the same path of the voice signal. As the voice signal goes low, this goes low as well. So this is an exact replica of the voice signal. The, the voice signal is controlling the amplitude of the carrier signal. And in doing so, you get an exact replica of the original voice signal. So when the receiver gets this information, it would remove all of this information. And here is, is the carrier frequency. All of this will be gone. It will just keep the line on top here, which is an exact replica of the original voice signal. Now here we're going to be talking about amplitude shift keying, abbreviated as ASK. Now, amplitude shift keying is a popular modulation technique used to modulate digital data for a large number of low pressure RF applications like tire pressure monitoring systems, home automation, and radio frequency identification technology devices, which are used in stores for um, detection of stolen items. Amplitude shift keying is very much like amplitude modulation. The only real difference is that we're using a digital signal here. Um, everything else is pretty well the same. You have your digital signal, which is multiplexed with your carrier frequency. In doing so, your digital signal controls the modulation of your carrier frequency. And uh, the amplitude modulated signal at the bottom here shows exactly that this digital signal controlling the amplitude of this carrier frequency and you will see it here. This modulated signal is an exact replica of this digital signal. As you will see here, digital signals go from 0 to 1 and you will see it goes from 0 to 1 here and then back to 0. Um, the modulated signal is doing exactly the same thing. So the modulated signal follows the same path. When the receiver receives this modulated signal, 
it would proceed to demodulate this, that signal. The receiver would assign a zero to the low areas and a one to the high areas here, arriving at the original digital signal that was sent. Now here we're gonna talk about frequency modulation. Now, frequency modulation is used for applications like radar, seismic prospecting, two-way radio systems, and FM radio broadcasting. Now I'm gonna use FM radio broadcasting as an example here. We have a radio station transmitting to FM radios at the other end. Now here we have a voice signal being transmitted and this is an analog signal of the voice just like before. This is the carrier frequency which would be an FM frequency before we were talking about the AM frequency. It works in the same way your transmitted signal is multiplex with your carrier frequency and your modulated signal is the end result. But it works a little bit differently. Before we were talking about amplitude modulation. So the amplitude of your modulated signal change with the signal here. However, now we're talking about frequency modulation. So we are going to be varying the frequency versus varying the amplitude, okay? So now, how this is done is that when the signal is low, you notice that your frequency here, which is a copy of this, the lines are further apart. And when the lines are further apart, it means that the frequency is slower. As the signal goes higher, you'll notice that the lines get closer together until it's very close in the middle up here. And then it will gradually get further apart as you get down here. And then in this area, it would be very wide apart, which will show that the signal is very slow in this area. And basically the signal will gradually get faster as you go back up here again and then the same thing would happen over and over right throughout the transmission now once the receiver gets this modulated signal it would proceed to demodulate it and the way this is done it would look at this signal and it would look at all of the frequencies within the signal because remember these are frequencies. When it's wide apart, it's a low frequency. These frequencies gradually change as the signal gets higher, so they get faster. So the receiver would record all of these changes of frequencies. And by doing so, it would end up with an exact duplicate of this transmitted signal, deriving it from this modulated signal. Okay? So that's basically how frequency modulation is done. Here we're going to be talking about frequency shift keying, which is abbreviated as FSK. Now, frequency shift keying is used by PLL stereo FM transmitters. The difference between frequency shift keying and frequency modulation is simply the digital signal. Now this digital signal is multiplexed with the carrier signal, which would result in a modulated signal. The way this works to get the modulated signal is that when this digital signal is at a zero, the modulated frequency is low. The, so you'll notice that the lines here are wide apart, which would indicate the frequency is low. We use a 980 hertz for low frequency. When the digital signal goes high, we'll notice that the lines here are close together, which indicates that the frequency is high, and we use an 1180 hertz. And it goes back to zero here at 981, low frequency, and then to one here at 1180 hertz you'll notice that the wave is just following the waveform back to zero and back to one and this will continue throughout the transmission so this is basically how the receiver would be able to differentiate between zeros and ones and reconstruct the original digital signal Here we're going to talk about phase modulation. Now phase modulation is used to transmit Wi-Fi, GSM, and satellite radio waves. 
Here we have our analog signal and just like amplitude modulation and frequency modulation, this analog signal is multiplex with your carrier signal deriving with the modulated signal. The way phase modulation works, this signal here goes from 0 to 180 degrees and then from 180 to 360 and then it starts again from 0 and 180 and 360 so it keeps on repeating so each time you go from 0 to 180 you have one wavelength under here you notice that at 180 degrees <clears throat> this symbol this wavelength here was going in the downward direction but it abruptly changed to the upward direction here in red that is because at 180 degrees you change phase now you're at a downward phase between 180 and 360 so now you change angles right here and you go to 360 at 360 you'll notice that a change happened again back to the original angle this will co be continue happening every time you reach a 180 degree angle or 360 degree angle you have a change in phase so as you can see here um, you have from 0 to 180 degrees on one phase and from 180 to 360 on the second phase and these are both the same frequency in blue we have a phase between 0 and 180 and in red we, the phase is between 180 and 360 now here we have phase shift keying abbreviated as PSK uh, this is the same of phase modulation the only difference is that you have a digital signal here and this digital signal is multiplex with your carrier signal just like before and you arrive at your modulated signal and you have two waves here now this modulated signal just like before changes phase at every 180 degrees 180 degrees here is every time the the digital signal change from 0 to 1 or from 1 to 0. Here we have it changing from 1 to 0 and this phase changes right here. You'll see the abrupt change to the other phase which is between 180 and 360. And then when it reaches this point here where the phase changes from 0 to 1 you see a change here again. It doesn't matter what direction this angle is going it would abruptly change to the opposite direction where here it changes to the upward direction and here you go on the other signal between 0 and 180 again and this will continue throughout going from 0 to 180 and from 180 to 360 the two signals now each one of these waveforms is capable of carrying one bit of information whereas both amplitude modulation and frequency modulation were just capable of carrying one bit period because they were only one waveform with phase shift keying you have two waveforms so you can carry twice as much information if this video was helpful to you and you would like to see more videos like this one please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done so this is Trevor from telecom training thank you for watching